All right, before we can continue the discussion of crystal field theory and ligand field theory, um, we need to kind of loop back and discuss Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity. So in general, the, the multiplicity or spin multiplicity is simply going to be the number of unpaired electrons in a given molecule, uh, which is defined as N uh, plus one. And there are going to be two contributions uh, to what dictates the stability of certain electron configurations over others. And the two considerations are combined together in the same concept, which is known as the pairing energy or um, this capital pi. Um, but the idea of this being that there are two contributions to pairing energy, and that's for pairing electrons uh, together in the same orbital. One is going to be the Coulombic energy of repulsion, which is dubbed uh, pi c. And as you can imagine, that's electrostatic repulsion um, by electrons in the same orbital. Um, and obviously that electrostatic repulsion is larger when the electrons are in the same orbital. So if you have, for example, three p orbitals and you sort of had this interaction, there's no, um, there's very minimal Coulombic repulsion. Um, but then if you took the same p orbitals and put the electrons into the same configuration, that actually has a much higher contribution of, uh, of pi c. And then you can kind of start imagining that this is why you're always taught to put everything um, in the highest possible state of spin multiplicity when you're writing out electron configurations as you learned in general chemistry. This is um, more stable with respect to pairing up the electrons in the same orbital. And then the other consequence to this is there's also um, a quantum mechanical exchange energy, which is, which is termed uh, pi sub e. And that depends on the possible number of exchanges between two electrons. And this is important. They have to be at the same energy and they have to be the same spin. So they both have to be spin up or they both have to be spin down in order to exchange. And they also need to be in the same energy level um, orbital or else no exchange is possible. And then the idea is the more possible exchanges, the lower the energy. So the way you can think about this is um, pi E is basically a positive energy. Pi C, um, so pi E is more stabilizing. The more of it you have, the better you, off you are. And pi C is a negative energy. The more of which you have, the, the less stable um, the, configuration, um, the configuration. And both of those, um, processes or, or, or um, you know, bo both of those um, effects render the, uh, the net pairing energy uh, capital pi. So let's kind of look at the exchange energy in a little more detail because this can be tricky to understand. <clears throat> so the first configuration here is assuming that we have a, a P3 configuration or sorry, a P2 electron configuration, but there's three uh, P orbitals. And I want you to see that the one electron is spin up, the other one is spin down. And this is an example of where you cannot exchange the electrons. So here is the up state and the down state combined, that's called the microstate. And that's one of the many microstates of how you can configure those two electrons in those three orbitals. And then you imagine if you actually sort of think about this, We'll color them in. You know, the PX is red, the PY is 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 uh, is blue. But remember, exchange can't happen. But hypothetically, if you could exchange them, this is what you would do. Essentially, PX would become PY, and PY would become PX. But the problem is, is that that is not allowed because that's a really, in essence, a different configuration, and it's simply because they're not the same spin. And exchange is prohibited in that case. Um, but then if you took it in the other direction where everything is spin up, we distinguish the two electrons with color. And then we can say what happens as a result of exchange. Well, the red exchange is for blue and the blue exchange is for red. And you basically get that configuration 
which is really, in, on, in all honesty, indistinguishable from the first one. That's the concept of exchange, but we're making them colored in to illustrate that, you know, you do have this ability for the electrons to, to sort of interchange between those orbitals. Um, but they're still both spin up, and then that would actually constitute um, one pi e, because you can exchange one, um, you can basically exchange one with the other, and then obviously you can't repeat the process because you already exchanged them. So there's one pi e for that configuration. So this is a lower energy microstate with respect to the, so, so this microstate is lower in energy with respect to the one up top. And that is gonna be very important when we, when we kind of consider what constitutes the most stabilized electron configurations. So here's an example. So the electrons obviously will spread out with the same spin that minimizes the coulombic energy and it maximizes the exchange energy. So that produces the, the basically the most stabilized um, energy possible or the most stabilized pairing energy possible. So the multiplicity, again, remembers the number of unpaired electrons plus one. Um, electrons also are dictated by their spins. So you'll hear the, the term that you'll call it spins. So the number of unpaired spins plus one is also the, the, the spin multiplicity. And if you, for example, had silicon where that's a 3P2 configuration, um, we can draw this configuration in multiple ways, but you would say that pairing them together is bad. Um, basically, we've introduced uh, a columbic term, which is not good. That's called the singlet state because the spin multiplicity of that has a, has a value of one, um, but it has basically zero electron uh, spin contributing to it because one spin up, one spin down, um, one half plus one, one half minus one half would be zero. Okay, then we can, we can draw the singlet state a little differently, um, where now we put the two electrons in separate p orbitals. That, that actually is better because now it removes um, the pi c component, but the problem is those are not exchangeable. So you remove the pi C, but they're not exchangeable. So there's no pi E that's, that's gonna stabilize it. And then of course, that's still a singlet state. One electron is spin up, one is spin down. Uh, one half minus one half is zero. That's the zero. The best possible configuration you can have is if both electrons are in parallel spins. Because now what you've done is now you've given this a pi E because these two electrons can exchange with each other. And that's a more stabilized configuration. And that's really how these lie in terms of energy. This is the most stable, that's the least stable. Um, but then when you look at this, what kind of configuration is that? Well, that's a one half, that's a one half. So basically we know that there's, there's two unpaired spins plus one, so that's three, and that's gonna be called a triplet. So you can see three constitutes a, a triplet. And that is the highest, the spin multiplicity you can generate in a P2 configuration, that's the most stable orbital configuration that you can have. So let's do a couple of examples because we did not cover this in chapter two, um, although it is covered in chapter two if you wanna go back and read about it. So let's take a few examples. So if I just deal with atomic um, electronic configurations for a moment, and I'm just gonna deal with a few um, common uh, molecules or common atoms that you'll find on the periodic table. So strontium-38 has an electron configuration effectively of 5s2. So we know that in the 5s2 configuration, those electrons are paired. Um, so that multiplicity is going to be 0 plus 1 uh, or 1, and that gives us a singlet. If we take 53 or iodine-53, um, that configuration is 5s2, 4d10, and 5p5. So if you think about the, the 5p orbital, um, or sorry, the 3p orbitals with five electrons in them, the only way to draw that is with one um, electron that's not paired, and that actually constitutes a doublet state. And what I want to do point out here is that you can exchange that spin-up electron with the other spin-up electrons that are, that are present there. So you can actually exchange those and that's gonna be a stabilizing um, phenomenon. 
So then the next one is if we take um, vanadium 23, that's 4s2,3d3. So now if you took the d orbitals all as degenerate, the spin multiplicity there has three unpaired electrons plus one to give you four. And that four, as you can see, has quart in it. Um, so that's, a, that's called a quartet. Then we have dysprosium 66, which now has um, four F10 configuration. We haven't talked much about F orbitals in this course, but there's seven different D orbitals. And if we fill them to 10, we can go across that seven and then eight, nine, and 10. And then what you see here is that leaves you with four unpaired electrons. And then the four unpaired electrons plus one gives you the, gives you the five. Um, and five is a quintet. And then finally, we uh, come to, to manganese, um, manganese 25. That's 4s2, 3d5. And if you look at that configuration, the best way to spread those electrons out is to give you five unpaired electrons in, in, in a completely degenerate d orbital set. And that gives you um, a spin multiplicity of six. So five plus one gives you six, and that will be called a sextet. And then as a result of this, you sort of see what we've done. Spin multiplicity of one is a singlet, two is a doublet, three is a triplet, just to repeat what we talked about on the previous slide. Four is a quartet, five is a quintet, and six is a sextet. So the most number of unpaired electrons we're going to face in a, in a d orbital configuration is going to be five unpaired electrons. So the highest spin multiplicity you'll see is going to be a sextet. So let's um, kind of just take another look at all the possibilities of how you can arrange two electrons, or sorry, um, how you can arrange all the electrons in a given set of degenerate p orbitals. So let's just kind of show what will happen. So if you have a single electron, there's one unpaired electron, that's going to be a doublet. So we know that that's a doublet. If we have two unpaired electrons, that's going to be a triplet. Four unpaired electrons, that's a quartet. And then, of course, you see what happens if we now start spin pairing, because we have no other, word, no other place to put that electron in that degenerate set. Now we're back to two unpaired electrons, that's going to be a spin triplet. And then finally, the D5 configuration is obviously, again, a doublet. And then if they're all filled, we're back to um, basically having no unpaired electrons, and then that's a singlet. So that's kind of the general way to think about how we um, number and name, number spin multiplicity, and then we have the names that correspond to it. So just to illustrate this relative energy effect, I wanted to just show you if we just go back to carbon as a P2 configuration, let's see what happens in energy if you kind of do these three separate electron configurations. So here, um, they're both spin paired in the first configuration. Here, they're separated into um, separate orbitals, but it's still a singlet, so they can't exchange. And then over here is the triplet where they can exchange. So if you kind of just compare their relative energies, the way you can think about this is going from top to bottom. This is the least stable. This is intermediate in terms of stability. And this is, this is the most stable. And that kind of illustrates Hun's rule in, 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 in its entirety is that the most stable electron configurations you can deduce is always going to be the ones that maximize spin multiplicity. And here, remember, this is a singlet, this is a singlet, and then this is a triplet. So that is why that really occurs. If you want to think about it from another or the reverse sort of standpoint, this being the most stable obviously has, in essence, the most positive energy because if, you, if you're stabilizing something, you go down in energy, and that's representing the most stable configuration. If you sort of think about what happens if you start adding coulombic um, energy, which is basically going from here to here, you're adding that, that pi C to it. What does that do? And well, that's really a negative energy, and that's going to bring everything up on the scale, on, on this relative energy scale that we have um, written down here. And the reason that happens 
is simply because of the fact that the coombic inter interaction is repulsive, therefore it's a negative energy, and then the exchange energy, which is pi e, is a stabilizing phenomenon, and that actually winds up stabilizing the configuration or lowering its energy or making the energy more positive. Um, okay, I think I will stop there and I will pick it up uh, where we start now talking again about electron configurations that are associated with the octahedral um, crystal field. Thanks.